Hello and welcome. If you want to study deep reinforcement learning, don't go anywhere. You're in the right place. My name is Thomas Simonini, and I'm the founder of Deep Reinforcement Learning course with TensorFlow, which is a free series of articles published on FreeCodeCamp. I'm really excited to present you this video version of the course. This will be a series of nine videos, one published per week. In these videos, we are going to focus on the implementation part of the architectures with TensorFlow, Q-learning, deep Q-learning, improvement deep Q-learning, policy gradients, A2C, A3C, PPO, etc. The idea is first to read the article associated with the video. Each article provides you a solid understanding of the architecture by beginning with a big picture, then diving on mathematical details. If you're not a math guy, that's not a problem, because in my articles, I explain each part of the formulas step by step. And then you'll implement an agent with TensorFlow thanks to the video. There is two main differences with the series of articles. The first is that you'll implement new agents if new environments, you'll build a strong portfolio by creating agents that learns to play Doom, Space Invaders, Outrun, Sonic the Hedgehog, Michael Jackson Moonwalkers, an agent that will be able to navigate in 3D environments with DeepMind Lab and able to work with Mujoko. This course will give you a solid foundation for understanding and implementing the future state-of-the-art algorithm. For more information, please look at the course official website where you'll find the syllabus and the calendar. And the second difference with the series of articles is that with the videos, you have the privilege to hear my French accent. So if it's the first time that you study reinforcement learning and deep reinforcement learning, you must first read the articles An Introduction to Reinforcement Learning, which provides you all the concepts and vocabulary you need to master before diving on Q-learning, which are reward hypothesis, exploration exploitation trade-off, difference between Monte Carlo and TD learning, and then you must read my articles An Introduction to Q-learning. So today, we'll implement an agent that learns to play Taxi version 2, an open AI gym environment where our agent must pick up the passenger at one location and drop him off to the goal as fast as possible. So you're ready? Let's dive on in. Dive on in! So, in this notebook, we'll implement an agent that learns to play open AI Taxi version 2. So the goal of the game is that our agent, here, must pick up a passenger at one location for instance here, and drop him off to the goal as fast as possible. So there is four locations, red, yellow, blue, and green. And this is a wall, so it means that, for instance, if our agent is here, he can't go here. So creating walls, adding complexity to our problem. So we have a system of points, so you receive 20 points for a successful dropout, you lose minus one point for every time step it takes. So why we lose one point at every time step? Because it will push our agent to go as fast as possible. And then there is also a 10 point penalty for illegal pickups and dropout action. For instance, if you pick up your client here, but you drop him off here, it's illegal. So you lose 10 points. So first thing first, write the code by your own. It's very important to not copy and paste, because by writing the code by your own, you will understand better. And the second thing is that you can find the notebook in the link in the description below. So, let's begin. So our first step is to import the dependencies. It means import the libraries that we'll need to create our agent. In our case, we use three libraries. The first is NumPy for our queue table. The second is OpenAI Gym for taxi environment, and finally random to generate random numbers. Okay, so now we'll create the taxi environment. So environment is equal to gym.make and the name of our environment, in our case taxi version 2. Okay, so this is our environment, this is our for location, this is the walls. And this is our agent. 
So now we'll create the Q table and initialize it. But to know how big will be our Q table, we must know how much states our environment has and how much action our environment has. So to do that, we have two functions that we can call. So action size is equal to environment action space dot n and we can print out and then state size is equal environment observation space Okay, so we can see we have six possible action and 500 possible states. So now we can create our Q table using NumPy. So Q table is equal to NP zeros because we initialize with zero. So number of rows with state size, so 500, and number of columns, action size, so six and then we can print out our Q table. Okay, so here we have our initialized Q table. So now we create the hyperparameters. Remember that the hyperparameters are variables that we use to tune the training of our algorithm. So the first is total episode. It is the number of episodes we will use to train our algorithm. The second total test episode is the number of episodes we'll use to, to test our algorithm. And then max steps, which is the maximum steps an agent can take during an episode. So then we have the learning rate and the gamma. The gamma is the discount rate. If you don't know what is discount, please read my article, Introduction to Reinforcement Learning. It's essential that you understand why we discount the reward. Then we have the exploration parameters. So as explained in the article, we need to do an exploration decay. So what it means? It means that in the beginning, we need to do a lot of exploration because we don't know anything about the environment. But as training goes by, we need less and less exploration and more and more exploitation. So we have the epsilon, which is the exp uh, exploration rate, the maximum value that this epsilon can have and the minimum value that the epsilon can have. And finally, the decay rate. So the decay rate is what will reduce, as time goes by, uh, the exploration rate. OK, so now we'll implement the Q-learning algorithm. So remember first how works the Q-learning algorithm. First of all, we initialize the Q-values. We've done that above here. We initialize the Q-table with zeros. OK, so all Q-value is equal to zero. Then what we do? Uh, for episode in range total episode, we chose an action A in the current world state S. So it depends if we are in situation of exploration or exploitation. If we are in situation of exploration, it means that we will take an action randomly. Otherwise, if we are in situation of exploitation, it means that we will take the action with the highest Q value for that state. Then we take that action. And we observe the new state and reward. And finally, thanks to that, we'll update Q uh, value of taking that action at that state using the Bellman equation. If you don't remember what is the Bellman equation, please read my articles, Introduction to Q-Learning. So let's begin. So as I said, for episode in range total episode, we reset the environment. Then fourth step in range max steps. So it, uh, what it is this loop? This loop says for each step in range max steps, so for each step that are inferior in the total number of max steps, we take an over step. If we are above max steps, it means that our episode must end because we take too much steps to drop off uh, the passenger. So we choose an action A in the current world state S. To do that, we must implement exploration exploitation trade-off. So to do that, we first randomize the numbers between 0 and 1. If this number is greater than epsilon, so remember that epsilon is the exploration rate, it means that we are in situation of exploitation. So we must taking the biggest Q value for this state. So what we do, 
we, we write np argmax of the Qtable at that state. So it will output the index of the action with the highest Q value for that state. Else, if we are in situation of exploration, in this case, we take a random choice. So now that we have our action, we take the action A and observe the outcome state S and the reward. And thanks to that, we will update our Q value for taking that action at that state using the Bellman equation. So it's equal to QSA plus learning rates by the reward plus discount rate by the maximum Q value of the new state minus the Q value of taking that action at that state. So now our state, our new state becomes the state. And if done, so if we finish the episode, in this case, we break the loop to begin a new episode. And so we'll add one to the number of episodes. And in this case, we reduce epsilon. Because as I said, as the training goes by, we need less and less exploration. So we need to reduce the epsilon. So this is a calculation to reduce the epsilon. So we've just implemented the secure learning. And now what we need to do is to train it. So let's do that. Okay, so now that our Q-learning algorithm is trained, we can begin to test our agent to see if it works correctly. So, we will run this cell that will tell us uh, what is the score over time, so which is the sum of reward for each episode divided by the total number of episodes we have. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, so we can see here each episode. So in this case, okay, so in this case, it takes the passenger uh, uh, in position B, up, 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 and then it dropping off at position R, okay? And the score over time in our case is 7.97, which is a very good score. So that's all for today. Look at what we've done. We've implemented a Q-learning agent that is able to play Taxi version 2, which is awesome. I hope you liked my video. To be honest, this is my first video, so if you have some feedbacks and advice, please write them in comments below. And if you have questions, also write them in comments below. Next time, we'll implement a deep QN agent that learns to play Atari Space Invaders. So please subscribe and follow me for more programming videos, and don't forget to like the video. If you like my articles and my videos, you can support me on Patreon. So that's all for today. Don't forget to keep learning and stay awesome.